Good morning, YouTube people. Today we have an exciting project, a brand new Mercedes Vito W447 van. And the driver is a bit of a stereo fanatic and he's totally not happy with this standard stereo. Apparently the Apple CarPlay just cuts out about 10 times every journey. So, what have we got here? <laughs> Okay, well, all right, lots of speakers. So door, door speakers, yep, we've got the door speakers, the head unit, different ones as well, right? Um, you've got the splitters flows. Um, I can't think of the name right now. Um, speaker brackets, every, all the brackets, face your plate, and everything that we're gonna need to put in the Alpine head unit. That one there, which is one of those big flip out screen style ones. Um, and lots of packets of connectors, bits and pieces, wiring kits. We will slowly come back in stages and just show each bit that we're doing. So this is gonna keep us busy for quite a while, I reckon. But it's gonna make a massive difference. Here's the amplifiers, and he has already spent a lot of time. How long did that take you, Stefan? Uh, on and off, probably about an afternoon and a half. Soundproofing with the back of the van and the side doors as well. Still got a bit more to do, obviously. Yeah. But that shows the difference where... Yep. Okay, so it's just tapping there to show you a big difference there. Excellent. This is going to help with the face vibrations. <laughs> Okay, so door trims are going to come off, so we're going to get to that soon. First thing we do is take out this battery support bracket. Um, disconnect the breather hose here. And this is under the driver's seat, which is on a right-hand drive Australian model. Take that off. I know that some of the earlier Vitos, it used to be on the other side, but yeah, it's under the right-hand side in this van. going to remove the battery entirely just to make life a lot easier to work with. Some bit tension a bit. Just a little bit more. There we have it. Okay, so battery's out. So obviously we're going to need to run uh, power supplies for the amplifier. Uh, one amp's going to go under this seat and one under the other seat, is that correct? That's correct. And where that will go, they will protrude out slightly from underneath there on each side, but it doesn't interfere with anything in the cargo space or where the subwoofer's going, which is gonna be right here. So the sub's going here. Okay, cool. All right, next I'm going to start to remove the fascia plate around the stereo. So to get the stereo fascia surround off, uh, use a plastic trim tool, pop it in, slide it along, and you'll see it'll go all the way around this whole piece. So this is all one piece, and just comes out. And that gives us access for everything that we need. Just be mindful of any wiring loose. Um, everything for access is actually quite good. I'll just shine some light on this. Okay, the panel there to... And there's absolutely tons of room behind the dashboard. Yep, we'll unplug that and get it right out of the way now. I reckon there's loads of room there look, to run cables to, to each side. Yeah, perfect. Four screws holding the old stereo on. Okay. So here we are. Here's a harness adapter going on. Well, there's lots of these plugs on the old stereo. Imagine one of them would be reverse camera. Not exactly sure. Well, we know we know that the, this one's a reverse camera. Sorry, the green one. So we're going to keep the original camera working, and that's the converter there for the for the Alpine. Whether or, or they should just sit in there and not connect to anything, we need to figure that out next. So before we go too deep, we will just can, um, install the stereo, connect the battery back up, and just make sure we haven't got warning lights everywhere and things not working because it's a bit unclear at the moment as to what these four 
do because there's nothing labeled on the stereo this is a left hand door trim and at the bottom you've got to get these clips out and they're actually quite fiddly because if you go to screw that middle piece the whole lot just turns so i had to try and kind of dig that bit the the, the center piece of the clip out um, and then i was able to slide this underneath the back and pull it out like that um, brand new door trim is obviously very tight if we come up a bit here um, i had to very carefully work my plastic trim tools again around this this was really tight actually I had to just carefully open it up open it up all the way along and then eventually managed to unclip that because there's screws hidden inside here that I need to get off now I have already popped a couple of the door trims loose loose at the bottom there very tight again and I used a rag over my trim tool because the last thing I want to do is scratch a brand new vehicle so I'm going to undo those screws next and then hopefully it will unclip and pull up and take the inner door handle off the cable release cable or whatever's under there and I should be able to lift the whole door trim up okay so we just uh, removed the factory speaker and as you might be able to see we've just been putting some soundproofing in behind door trim unfortunately there's these stupid rivets so we're actually unable to take off the shroud here which is a bit annoying because i wanted to soundproof the entire door but access is just proving to be a bit difficult but the main thing is we've got some soundproofing in behind here uh, which will help with the resonance from the rear of the speaker um, just about to put uh, where did i put it Anyway, I'm just about to put one of these speaker panels uh, behind, which also helps um, maintain the speaker quality. Um, unfortunately, there's this cross beam here, so I'm still about to try and figure out what I'm going to do exactly regarding that. All right, so I'm using one of these cable to um, grabber tools to pull the cable speaker wire up through the door boot so hopefully it'll make it slightly easier so grab grab hold of my wires here it gets a bit tight here there's a wiring loom that's making things difficult obviously and just feed it in if i pull this through come on so tight oh there we go and in it goes. So my speaker wires are now through the boot. So I've got the cables in, put some connectors on the end. These cables are really hard to tell the difference between positive and negative, so I've put a masking tape on what is the positive here. Um, and these go off to the um, crossovers and this is an adapter speaker plate um, kit for the Mercedes van to be able to screw the L-pines into here and then this is designed to fit your Mercedes door. All right speaker on next. Just another tip here the really long screws to hold the speaker onto the bracket and those plastic holes in there are really really tight so I Rather than risk slipping off a screw and stabbing a really expensive speaker, I'm just going to manually run the screw so that it can create its spread into these new brackets and then back out again. Because, yep, yeah, I really don't want to slip off a screwdriver and damage those kinds. So I think that's going to help me now. So they're extremely tight holes. So there we go, one Alpine speaker installed. Now, just in case you wondered what mod all the speakers are. Where's the box? <laughs> uh, we have got some Alpine R-S65C.2 is probably why it The R-series. Yeah, it doesn't roll off the tongue, that one. I struggled a bit with that, but uh, <laughs> the R-series, eh? So that's the best of the best, is it? We've got uh, tweeters, they're mid-range and tweeters, right? Yeah, it's, it's, and some crossovers included in the kit. 
it's one of their better quality speakers um, before you start going completely crazy with cost. Um, okay. I think these are generally retail for about 380 to 400 Australian. Yeah. Um, so they're definitely up there in quality. Um, like anything, you can always get more expensive, but yep. uh, for me, this is the limit of where I really need the stereo at. And do you remember what that one's called? This uh, yes, this is the ILX F269E Halo unit. There you go. Um, I'm just in the middle of putting the uh, fascia trim together, which is proving to be really difficult. That's one where the screen sticks out of the dash. Yeah, it doesn't flip out, it actually sort of hovers out of the dash. You'll see afterwards. <laughs> so I'm just having a bit of warfare with this at the minute, because uh, this is interfering with access to quite a lot of the screws. <laughs> yep. All right, my next step is, excuse me, to run the wires and put all the trims back on. I'm going to come down to this amplifier here. Well, the amplifier will be at the back, so the wires are starting to come together now. This particular wiring harness, the yellow power lead, you've actually got to wire up yourself. So that's this one here we've got coming down the back of the dash at the moment. Obviously, it's going to be installed and tidied up properly. Um, going to go under the floor. It's got a fuse on it. And it's got a flat connector. Um, we're going to change that to a bolt-on type. I'll uh, crimp another one on there in a minute so it can be bolted directly to the battery. Um, this trim panel by the step just uh, yanked out, didn't it, Stefan? Just lift it out. Yep, just lift it up. That's that panel there. So just under the driver's footwell is a plastic trim that I removed. That has three T25, I think, screws. And that gave me access to run uh, the amp wires from the stereo up over the top. I've cable tied it up there, it's a bit difficult to show you, but they come down here, cable ties neatly along there. Whilst I'm at it, I've just put his speaker cable because, in this case, amplifier is going to run his speakers. So, I've left enough lead here for when I get the door trim off later and we put run the cable up through there. Um, this is the other end of the speaker wire coming under the original wiring channel on the car, neatly cable tied. So that's going to make its way over to the left side, where his amplifier is going to be for the, for the speakers and all the bass stuff for the sub. And amp will be this side. Now to get the speaker wire for the tweeters down the back of the dash is actually quite hard. I've used the curtain wire and I've poked it down from up the top here. Let's get these trims off by the way. And there's a middle piece first that unclips, just pops up and then you work your way along the edges and they just lift out and then um, and then you're in there and the tweeters just gave them a, a pry with a screwdriver upwards they just sit in clips so they came up and then for the new ones I'm using We've cut, half cut the foam adapter down, it was twice as thick. Made it a bit thinner, that'll stick in there. And then the speaker, is, um, the sweeter would just sit in the foam basically. So I'm going to need two hands for this, so I'm going to turn the camera off and pull on that wire. And that will bring it down here where we plug in the crossovers into that wire. All right, so the battery's almost ready to go back in. Got these really nice connectors here on the uh, blue power cable. And then I've insulated that to the, to the original loom. And um, around the back there, the battery will go in and then we'll bring the, the earth lead round and connect it onto the negative here. It's just easier than doing it now and obstructing the battery. So the battery will go in easy now in the back here. Got the amplifiers going in. So connect this is the base amp. The main speaker amplifier is all done under the seat over there. And so what we're using is a splitter from four gauge from the main wire, uh, from the main battery. 
um, which then goes into an 8 gauge power which is run under over to that and we have another we'll have another 8 gauge which will go into here directly into the subwoofer amp and there's the lovely head unit there which we'll get to next all right so this is how it looks the alpine sticks out from the dash it's gone really smoothly um, the hardest bit was probably the tweeters getting the wiring up there um, was not too easy the side panels as well good old German trims never easy to get back on um, but it, it sounds great it looks amazing bass is pumping got the subwoofer got the microphone installed up there for the hands three The only thing is the reverse camera is not working so we're going to have to do some more work on that another time but it took us about eight hours to of us to do this so for now we are done hope you enjoyed